This is the Team Objection Podcast for May 24th, 2018. As you can see, if you're on our YouTube channel, we have gotten our video capabilities back. If you're listening, we're just kind of back to full strength and it's a regular type episode. Don't worry about that. But we have Michelle back on the show. Dave is gone. He's in New Jersey, a.k.a. the shithole of America. Yeah, he's being a douche in New Jersey. You know he is right yeah. now, too. Fits Sounds right about in. right. He's, he's ready to go. He's been New Jersey born and bred his whole life and didn't know it. At this point, he's probably walking up to some people's table and is like, here, you know what? I just got a huge raise. Let me cover that for you. And they're like, no, we're actually, we're good. We'd, we'd rather pay for it. Or so. We'd rather pay double, in fact. Yes, yeah. And in fact, we're going to tip, too, because we know you won't, sir. And he's like, yeah. oh. It looks yeah. very sad. Oh, Dave. I listened to the episode last week. It was a lot about basketball that I didn't understand. But Sean helped me understand with his allegory. Not allegories. His uh, his analogies analogies that's what i'm thinking of oh my god i'm so dumb uh it was actually really entertaining and i learned a lot so are you glad yeah. that uh you probably not that you know more about basketball but are you glad that you could peer you know into our inner psyches here our hopes and dreams no yeah <laughs> oh. a little it was i mean it was just not a topic that would have been discussed if I'd been there. Or maybe it would have been. I don't know. But I'm glad that you guys got to talk about it. You're very passionate about it. It was, it was cute. I got to fix Sean. He's crooked. Hold on. Vamp for me. I'm crooked. Oh. I mean, is that really behind you. shocking to anybody? Oh. Oh, I'm crooked. <laughs> yes. Quite. Uh, oh, oh. Now I'm straight. Well, That's not true. I'm like leaning sideways for no reason. I don't have to do that. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> That's a little closer. Okay. All right. Good. Can so we get back to the podcast? This has been wildly entertaining for the radio listeners. Yes. <laughs> so <laughs> this, this week we're going to play catch up on some reviews. And then on Tuesday's show, we had the return of a segment we've only run once and that Sean has not yet had a chance to compete in. And he's throwing his phone on the or something on the floor. What's it was my spike ball. It's for my plantar fasciitis. Okay. I'm supposed to be oh. rolling my foot on it, but I'm throwing it in the air and I dropped it. <laughs> He'll get it, though. So uh, we have some, some things we've been watching recently that we want to do quick reviews on. Not rapid reviews. That's an old segment that we're not doing. It's not one minute. But uh, who's the most excited? Who wants to talk about their thing first? I do. I have oh. some inflammatory remarks. Go for oh, it. Oh, are we going now? I'm not <laughs> Start the timer. Just kidding. Okay. Uh, I actually go. like I like the non rapid reviews better. Well, you don't feel as much pressure this way. And I feel like well yeah. and I feel like we're more insightful of course. I don't know. I feel like we get pressure when uh you know, we're trying to run a professional studio, people just walk by. Uh we can go <laughs> more I don't know. I feel like you really get into it because we feel like uh in one minute and we don't end up saying like anything of value. Uh, so, my review is on Black Mirror. Yay! Is the mirror still black? Yes. Okay. It's always black. Interesting, interesting, interesting. Yeah. Except for when it's not. Wh what? <laughs> no, no, it's the, when it's not black. Your phone is always black. Okay, that's the point. So, yes. So, I started this show on uh, the first episode, which was the pig one. <laughs> Sex with the pig. That's... So... Chris, yeah. if you haven't seen the show or heard of it, a senator, some politician, uh, his daughter. No, it's not even his daughter. Some random schmo is kidnapped, some girl. And the kidnapper's like, I will release this girl if you have intercourse on camera with a pig until you uh, complete. Completion. The climax, yes. This is the first episode, by the way. I was episode. told to skip it. They were like, Michelle... Skip it. You'll feel better. I can't do that, though. I'm a completionist. So I started with it. I actually liked that episode quite a bit. A lot but of it was very. Really do, actually. Um, I'm not one of them. <laughs> because, because so, so Chris, the whole, the whole conceit here is uh, it's, a, it's a televised event. So everybody in, in Britain, because they all, they're weird people, they're all tuning in to watch this live. Mm -hmm. And, uh, while they're in there, the guy releases the girl on some bridge, but nobody knows. Are you seeing the big, powerful sure. metaphor here? Nobody knows because nobody they're knows. all inside watching TV. So yeah. uh, what I just told you is all you need from the episode. Oh, hey. I got you a spiky ball. Got it. Uh, that's it. You have no reason to watch the episode 
at all now. And that's what I've heard. So I'm familiar with the show and I'm familiar with episode one because there was a lot of articles about it like, this is what just happened and it's like controversial and some people did like it, some people didn't. And I read about that and I was like, no. No. I thought it was well made and I thought that the tension was really good. And yes, you might be right, but we could wrap up anything with two or three sentences. No. Nope. So I think no, that's kind no, of a no, fallacy. No, 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 no. See, see, you didn't think I had a plan for you, Michelle? Uh oh. I oh, God. My game face on. Mm hmm. So you flash forward to my favorite episode of the show, the Star Trek episode. You're, Which you, I haven't seen. You've seen it. Oh, you haven't seen I thought you, I was waiting for like some glimmer of recognition. No, unfortunately, I, I'm stuck in season three. Okay. So Star Trek episode. Oh, God, I can't spoil it now, though. <laughs> you can. You can. It's fine. So basically, here's what they do. In the Star Trek episode, it's the same idea where there's like some big... Um, not really a huge twist, but um, you kind of have the established characters and things seem like they're one thing and then they go terribly, terribly wrong. Mm. The reason this episode is different is because there's actually like an emotional journey. There's characters that you care about. They're doing something of value and there's some kind of uh, 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 arc, uh, arch. Oh, I always confuse this. Hmm. Um, there's something there that's happening. It's actually a story being told, not some like twisted Aesop's fable turned to shit, which is what the pig episode was. Mm -hmm. I've told you every reason you need to watch the pig episode. Now the Star Trek episode, I could tell you the big twist and I would say you can still watch it because it's enthralling and it's well told and you care about these people. Why don't you tell me about the twist? Well, like I said, there's not like a huge, there's not like a huge twist. So okay. <laughs> the guy, the guy, this guy can take people's DNA and put it into this like machine and it can like up digitize uh, uh, a version of them from their DNA. Right. Okay. But they have the memories of when they were a real person. So it would be like, if I took Chris's DNA, put him in my game, he would wake up the next day being like, where am I? Where I was about to do the podcast, like what's happening? And he's technically code, but he has the consciousness of like himself in real life and more horrifying all the memories. So he feels like he's now trapped in this like game world. Okay. And in normal black mirror, that would be the end. That would be like the big twist. Oh my God. True. How yeah. interesting. This is like, okay, they go on a mission to try to find a way to break out of this guy's like hold that he has like the game master over their lives. And it is amazing. It involves trying to communicate with their real selves in the real world. And it's starring Meth Damon. Which, so he's great and so creepy. And it's, okay. it's great because you think they, they build it where you think, uh, oh, we're going to get a story about this guy, this poor guy. We're going to feel sorry for him, but he's going to, you know, he's going to get confidence and he's going to be the hero. And um, that is not what it happens. So I'm confused. Do you like Black Mirror or not? <laughs> Fair question. So I've watched probably four, ep five episodes now. San Junipero, uh, yeah. five million merits. Five yeah. million, 50 million, one of the two. Whatever. Yeah, it's from the love. first season. And I love Jet San Junipero. And mm -hmm. I watched uh, Playtest, which I thought was okay. And oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And then Star Trek. And White Christmas, which was pretty good. I like that one. Pretty good, but it ha it's the one, it's the episode that makes me feel the worst. It makes you feel real bad, It yeah. makes me feel worse than maybe anything I've ever watched. <laughs> that's the, my problem with Black Mirror, and that's why I'm stuck in season three. Actually, the last one I watched was San Junipero, which doesn't make me feel bad, no. but um, that was a very good one. Though, I have questions about it. It's not entirely a happy ending, but no. um, I... I like a lot of the episodes, like in theory, but I just, it, they're bummers. They're huge bummers. Like almost all of them across the board are. And so they're usually very well done. Cinematography's good, directing's good, acting's great, but it's just too much for me sometimes, especially at this day and age. Like I know things are bad and it's just like, here is like even, even worse. And you're just like, Oh God. It's just, it's kind of, it makes my anxiety just spike whenever take, I watch it. Like 5 million merits. You can take that episode and be like, not only is this an allegory for like, you know, how into the media that we are and how 
our office jobs are basically like these bikes that they ride on. Like we're just on the, we're in the machine every day. It kind of goes like a level deeper. And I think you can make a case like it's about um, Kevin and I were talking about this, like oppression of different minority groups, women, uh, African-Americans in America and how, uh, you know, we exploit them until we can, or, or we, we, we oppress unless we feel like we can make a profit and exploit them for our own gains. And then we kind of accept them and we allow them to elevate and be, uh, you know, into a class change and all, like, and you can keep going. Um, uh, if you're, if you're in a low class and then you make it to the upper class, do you just become part of the problem? Right. You didn't get that with the pig sex episode. You got, wow, we really do spend too much time watching TV. No, I think that might be simplistic, but I see what you're saying. It is definitely like, it's funny that you would be so opposed to this because you seem to really love shock value. And that was kind (laughs) of, Uh Oh (laughs) no, no. you know, I like game of Thrones, but the shock value has to have some purpose, which is why I've kind of soured on walking dead, which is all about shock value too. I need it to. But there like, is a purpose. You just the, don't like it. <laughs> you know, like even to raise the stakes in like a believable way, then I like shock value for that too. But if if I feel like oh this is really just shock value because the writers have run into a corner, they have nothing left. That's that's not how it was though. I'm the sorry. Somebody sets? is like mowing their lawn like right outside my door. It's really yeah. loud. Um, I apologize, but. I don't feel like that was the case. I thought, for the most part, the writing was pretty tight. And no, you don't care about any of the characters necessarily, but it's still really thrilling to watch, and you want to know how it ends. I didn't love it. But, like, I don't like... So, when you have an episode, and apparently a few of the episodes do this. I haven't seen them, but, like, you go through the whole episode, and there's a white bear, I think, is the episode. Uh, yeah. So, the whole thing, Chris, is... There's this woman, she wakes up, a really abridged version. She, like, these people are following her, and there's this, like, weird, she's being chased, but people are, like, filming it. She's begging them for help, and, like, they won't. They look like civilians. Cut to the end of the episode. She is a prisoner, and she murdered some kid, and this is her punishment. So every day she has her memory wiped, and she has to relive this, like, horrible thing, and, Mm -hmm. like, the audience gets to participate. And you're like, cool. So nothing that I just watched had any value at all that I spent 40 minutes with and uh, you know, there, there's a, there's a what Michelle is making faces just, at me. What? I just feel like your interpretation of these episodes are really simplistic. I think there's a whole lot going on with like the human psyche and how we treat other people and, and how we utilize like reality TV as this weird escapism and a way to like, um, uh, punish people for things that they do. That's bad that I we have that- moral pro- it's so interesting. That I thought there. that one I in particular was so good. That. that was all there. I we agree on that point, but at a, as a story, it to me it's like it's, it's like Dallas, right? They're, they're not stories. It, the storytelling is for an entirely different purpose, though, and I can see how you wouldn't like it for that reason. And that's a fair assessment of it. But it's doing more than trying to just tell you a story about characters that you're supposed to care about. It's but, but I want, it's beyond that. I want a story. I, I want you to still do all of that bullshit about the, the symbolism and making mm-hmm. a statement, but then I want it in the framework of a story that actually matters because that's what matters. matters. That's what, that's why storytelling to me matters. But storytelling doesn't have a singular purpose though. I think it matters. Um, it definitely matters. I mean, consider how popular the show is and how people are talking about it, having dialogues about it. I think that makes it successful, honestly. All I'm saying is Black Mirror, I, I am I am split. If you have an episode where there is an actual story arch, like the the writers took more than three set like if it if it seems like Ugh. the writers thought of a metaphor and just wrote the metaphor on the page, I don't like that as much. If they had a metaphor and like, you know what, let's be smart about it and let's build it into this better story, then I like it. I mean, I'm defending the hell out of it. All that said, I some of the episodes I just don't care for. And so I can see where you're coming from. But I think that the effort, like the attempt at trying to reach something, you know, really poignant is, 
I applaud them and I think they succeed most of the time, even if they don't have like, you know, the, the standard like narrative arc that you might be expecting. I still a little outside the box, you know, the pig one we can, we can argue. Cause I understand like a lot of people really do like that episode white bear. We, I, I like it a you, lot. You, you can't for me, you can't give me an episode and then, and then show me everything that I saw was completely irrelevant and be like, but that's the point. It's not irrelevant. Oh my God. We can argue about this all day long, but we're going to, it's going to be an agree to disagree kind of situation. And that's okay. You're already over here a lot of time. And I'm not necessarily convinced we haven't talked about this on the show before. Really? Uh, I don't remember. Because I remember those two episodes in particular being talked about in some format. And I can't imagine why we would have talked about it outside of the show. You and I, I don't know. Probably not. So I think well, this has already been covered, and your time has now been yielded to the floor. I had a full minute, though. No, I'm sorry. Are you the, sure it's over? The gentleman, or the, I guess the madam from Portland, now has the floor. Wait, wait. Yay! What the floor, though? Oh. Um, oh. So I'm going through it, and I'm only watching the episodes that I have heard have good reviews. This and is... I'm going literally in order of best reviewed to worst reviewed. There's one that I want to send to you that I think you would like. I can't remember the name of it, um, but it has Dom Nog Gleason in it. It's very good. Uh, it's like... Uh, I'll the rope, the AI one. I'll be right back or something yes. like that. That's yeah. that's up there. That's okay. on the list that's yeah. like up there. And I'm sure I'll love it. I think um, I like it. So it's a little skewed because now I've watched some episodes that I hate. And then I've started being like, well, this show sucks. I'm going to go in order of best reviewed. And I have loved the best of the best. The Shan- okay. San Junipero and uh, the Star Trek one and all those. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to go with like eight out of ten right now. And that's as long really as it keeps, high. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. You're arguing with me. I'm like, I like the show still. You spent like 20 minutes shitting all over it, and you're like, that's an eight out of ten. But I really, I don't like. I think it's lazy storytelling to to do to do a twist that un- upends everything. That that's all. That's all I'm saying. All right, all right. I all would right. think you would agree with that. You're like the queen of like when you kill a character, it erases their entire potential. And no, blah, blah, it's different. It's different. It, it's a different context entirely anyway right. to your review i'm gonna are freaking argue everything <laughs> i'm just saying yeah you won't i don't think you've seen it so it doesn't matter um i re- i'm reviewing a uh, netflix show called agretzko and it is about it's an animated like series like 15 minute long episodes 10 episodes long for this first season it's about a red panda it's kind of in the style of uh, hello kitty it's actually a lot like in the style of hello kitty um, it's about a red panda named uh, Retsuko, and she lives in Japan, and she's like 26, 20, I think she's 26 years old, working at like a kind of a dead-end job in the accounting department of this uh, trading firm, and she hates her boss, and she hates her job, and it's really, it's so good, like it's hard to explain, there's a lot of, um, uh, work harassment kind of issues that come up, sexism, feminism comes up, and it's just like a really weirdly empowering show um, for like a cartoon. I was not expecting that at all. And um, the characters get like really interesting as the show develops. And again, it's only like 150 minutes long for the season, but I was like shocked by how invested I was in the characters and like all of the characters, even like her shitty, awful chauvinistic boss. Um, by the end of the season and oh and her like her stick is that like she's she's very like good and respectful and she tries her best and she goes above and beyond the people pleaser but in order to kind of like get around that or to like get through the day she's like really into singing death metal at a karaoke bar after hours and she just like screams her rage um and it's really sweet and like really well done um i love it and i would recommend it to so both she of sounds you amazing <laughs> yes, nice actually, that's, that's a really good in comparison. Uh, so, are yes. all is everyone an animal, or is it just her yeah. and then a bunch of humans? No, everyone's an animal. So okay. it's not like uh, BoJack Horseman, where some people are humans, some people are half animals. Like it's definitely all animals. But um, and it doesn't to me, it doesn't seem like the, the animal uh, was representative of their personality very much. It's just kind of like, oh, they're cute, and so there's they're that character. Um, so there's like a like a fennec fox is like her kind of like a dry humored best friend or best friend work friend and there's this hyena named Haida who is i think he has like a little crush on her and he also works with her and it's it's kind of like the office 
It's actually a lot like The Office, but more from like a female perspective. It's really good. I actually really like that the animals aren't like their personalities. Yeah, they're not. Um, the only one that would be kind of similar, there's a character um, that is a deer, and she kind of does the whole like doe-eyed thing, but it, that's the only one that I would say would be reminiscent of that kind of match matchup. But yeah, I watched the whole thing basically in one fell swoop, and I adored it. I thought it was really smart and really funny. You just wish that you were the main character. I kind of am the main character, to be honest. <laughs> like, Honestly, it gets kind of, as you go through the episodes, she kind of decides, she's like, I hate my job. The only way out of this is to, and this is kind of questionable, is to marry up, basically. And so she's like, she like joins a yoga class and is like trying to get in shape. And she ends up meeting these really powerful women who work in the same uh, company. And she's always admired them. And they end up becoming really good friends. And that friendship between those three is like so well done. And obviously her perspective of like marrying to get out of, of work, it doesn't, does not pan out. And she ends up like falling in love with someone who's like inattentive and kind of awful. And she's like, this is fine. Cause she's trying to like compromise and she can't, it's so good. Like it deals with relationships super well and like work dynamics. It's just like, I was surprised by how much they could do in such a short period of time. It was very good. Is it a, is it a comedy like full on comedy or is it like a drama and there's some funny elements, but it's mo it's mostly comedy. Okay. Um, but they still have like really good beats, like emotional beats. Like I didn't cry, which I mean, that probably says something it's mostly comedy. Um, but there are definitely moments I was like, Oh, this is getting a little real. Like I, I felt this kind of feeling before and I just, she was very relatable as a main character. Um, yeah. That's like my favorite kind of comedy anyway is uh, and I was asking because I want to know like how to recommend it to my roommates. If it's a comedy, it's an easier sell than if it's a drama. Um, yeah, but but that's the best kind of comedy anyways. If they if it's funny, but then it, it hits you in the feel sometimes. It's it's really charming. Um, and also the death metal is really good. <laughs> like, that's because death metal is like, good. Like kind of great. And then at one point there's like this weird like uh, karaoke off with the boss and he raps and it's so good. Like all of it is so good and I was shocked. Um, so yeah, I know like Michaela said she didn't dig it. Um, and I don't think it's for everybody. The humor is pretty dry and it is, it's pretty like pessimistic i guess um but i like that kind of humor and um Mikhail's i thought big on cynical yeah and it, it is cynical um so it isn't for everybody and it kind of gives off this very sweet air and that's kind of the point right so it looks very sweet it's like hello kitty it's very like oh i like this too kawaii um but then it actually has like something under the hood and uh the character is actually quite complex and it's it's really good i liked it a lot it's like a nine out of ten for me i can't wait for season two Dang. Is that a Netflix show too? Yeah. No. Dang. We're going home yeah. on Netflix reviews. I was talking to Chris about it and like separately and we were looking it up and I guess they did like these one minute shorts with the main character, like a hundred of them from like 2016 to now. And so these, this is like brand new content using the same characters, I guess. So, um, yeah, we're it's really cool. We're going to do that on our podcast someday. Huh? We're going to be able to do that for like our podcast and we're going to, they're going to, one day, far in the future, after we've made our sitcom, they're gonna be like, "Yeah, they used to have a podcast actually before, and, <laughs> and they did the show. It's all original content, and yeah, Sean, totally. he got a high def camera finally, and it was just really <laughs> great." And... You're so bitter. You're just mad because you can see all of my pores. <laughs> you look like you have a mirror. Like you're looking through a mirror. Is it a black mirror? Yes, and I look like I'm looking through a slimy <laughs> window of a car. <laughs> that seems appropriate. Uh, <laughs> that's nothing. I don't know what that is. <laughs> of course, we had a eight out of ten and a nine out of ten. Yeah. Have to give a ten. Not necessarily, but I think you have to go higher than an eight. Uh, so I'm prepared to do that. Yeah, I'm gonna review the TV show I hate the most. <laughs> it's a two out of ten. Let me spend time on it. I'm gonna review Cobra Kai. Yay! This is a YouTube Red exclusive series. I'm I'm going to explain what it is if you'll just okay. give me four fucking minutes to talk well, this episode. Sean, Sean I was like, Cobra yay! Kai. It, you know, he already knew what it was, so I thought you might have breezed over it or something. I review Cobra Kai, 10 out of 10. <laughs> review over. <laughs> I'm sorry, Chris. Go, go, go. 
I got 17 seconds into my section before I got interrupted. Wasn't my fault. 17 <laughs> seconds into my section. I even had a couple of things I wanted to bring up in the previous one, and I'm like, no, there's a nice flow going. I'm not going to interrupt and bog this down. The show's called Cobra see. Kai. No. <laughs> it's about the <laughs> dojo from the Karate Kid movies that was very, very firm and set in its ways about striking first and doing whatever it takes to win, and anybody who does anything less than whatever it takes to win is somehow less of a man because there were no women in it. And so it's basically like the Karate Kid 4 Sort of. Yeah. It's, it's a continuation. It's the same universe. It's the same characters, the same leads playing said characters. It just takes place, you know, 25 or 30 years down the road, and the main character has changed. Instead of following around everybody's favorite crane kicking in the face illegally, uh, uh, Daniel LaRusso, it switches. And Johnny, the guy who was basically like built up as the antagonist in the first two films and change, is now the guy we're sort of trying to rally behind. And instead of that being weird, instead I think it's one of the things that makes it the strongest. Hmm. So you take like Daniel LaRusso is still around. He's still a protagonist. He's not the main character, but he's definitely like the secondary one. But instead, you kind of get this look of like he's mostly still the same guy. He's kind of lost his way a little bit. He's made some decisions that are questionable. He gets riled up easily, kind of like he did in the first movie. He's kind of like quick to anger. But he's just kind of on the side doing his thing. It's more about how Johnny's going through world, the world now. And his life sucks. He has an estranged wife. His son hates him. He's drunk all the time. He's living in squalor. He has Thank nothing. You. Getting kicked in the face took everything from him. And now it's about how he's rebuilding his life and making himself relevant again. Hmm. It's so good. Michelle. Yeah? Uh, it, like it's cheesy, both uh, some of the dialogue and and some of the. I think the actors do pretty good. The guy who plays Johnny, I think, is really pretty solid so far. From what I've seen of Larusso, he has not kept up in the, quite the same shape. So some of the action from him is a little iffy. But you don't really care because it's so like charming, um, and it hits like all the beats of like uh, who's who's the big. I say John Carpenter, the the eighties guy. It's not the right name. Like Sixteen Candles, all those movies. Who is oh, that? the big guy? Uh, like Breakfast yeah. Club. <laughs> yeah, why why can't I think of his name? Anyways, it's a it hits like all those like high school uh movie beats, but I think there's something inherently appealing about that anyway, and it mixes that in with a much more kind of mature story of these two adults who are, you know, the midlife crisis. One is doing really well for himself for the most part. John Hughes. Yes, thank Mm. you. One is doing not so good. Um, Mm. I'm just, I'm trying to think of another metaphor. Metaphor, uh, that's not the right (laughs) word. Another example of when you took a movie and the whole movie is like you have a protagonist and an antagonist and then in a follow-up, you switch their roles? Mm Mm-hmm. It's amazing. It's so good. And I don't know if uh, if LaRusso is necessarily the... He's not. He's not the antagonist, but he's kind of serving the dual role of secondary protagonist and also kind of an antagonist. So I haven't seen, like, any of the movies in that particular suite. Like, any of them. Would it matter? Not even the remake? Does it matter? Not really. I think, that, that's good. I think it stands on its own. You certainly get a lot of background from at least the first movie. I don't know that anything beyond the first one is required by any means, but understanding these motivations in the times where there aren't flashbacks to the first couple movies is not required, but helpful, I think. Yeah. It's also cool because the, the studio is like, strike first, strike hard, no mercy. Like, that's their mantra. And you're like, oh, though in the fir- in the movie, that's what a villain does, you know? And now that we're he's like helping these high school kids and this idea of like strike first and strike hard is like it it's like a twist and they're using it in like a positive way for like self esteem and confidence and uh, standing up for yourself and it's so good. But it's not huh. entirely positive and that's what's made interesting about it because yeah. it's still all kind of gray area, you know. And he's still like a sexist asshole. Yeah, he has not really extricated himself from the eighties. He's still kind of set in his ways that were you know 
pounded into him by his sensei at the time, who was definitely an asshole. Yes. And he's got those lingering effects of it. So, I mean, it's it's interesting because, like, he is doing some good, but in a, in a not necessarily the best way, not an unselfish way. Overall, he's had moments. So, I mean, again, you can't really pick any one character like, that's the good person, except maybe the young kid who's, like, under his tutelage first. That's the one person you can say, like, this character is a good character. Everybody else, they're good-ish. They do some good things, and they also do some things that make them look less good, including even Daniel LaRusso's own daughter. Like, she's been a little bit all over the place so far in the midway point of the season where you're like, I don't really know if I like this character or not. I think so. I see the good in her, but sometimes she's really dumb. So, unfortunately, you have to have YouTube Red to watch anything beyond the first two episodes, which are up on a trial basis. Fortunately, there's a one-month free trial if you want to just binge through all ten episodes of the first season. It's already been picked up for season two and was after the first two episodes had done enormously well on their trial basis. Uh, So, it's kind of a mixed bag. I have had no other reason to have YouTube Red to this point. I have no other reason to keep it once this month is done except for maybe season two. But, you know... That's true of, I guess, some other streaming services, too. If there's a one-hit wonder on them, I might subscribe only long enough to watch it and then just abandon the whole thing. I didn't know YouTube Red was putting out original content. That's how behind the times I am. I think this is one of their first... Oh, okay. Certainly their first big endeavor, because I had never heard of it before this either. Okay, yeah. Yeah, I think they've done some, like, original programming, but nothing on the scale of an Amazon or a Netflix where it was original programming with a full-blown studio backing and stuff like that. It was more support these already existing YouTubers and give them a platform to do their own original content, which was just not going to have a foothold with, like, the mainstream viewer. It's so funny, Michelle. It's really well written. I'm shocked how funny it is. Yes. Aw. Yeah. Because we watched the trailer for it. Uh, a couple months or maybe a month before it came out. And the trailer looked good. And that was part of why I gave it a shot in the first place, was I said, well, you know, I'm interested, and I like the Karate Kid, so yeah, let's give it a shot. But even that, I don't think, conveys how well done both the humor and I guess there are a handful of tender moments that it's done pretty well, too. It's it's not reinventing the wheel on anything. Like Sean said, it is somewhat formulaic in a lot of ways, and you're not necessarily caught off guard by any twists. or Like, this is the anti-Black Mirror. This, that, no it one- doesn't... It doesn't exist to have twists. It only exists to be good at what it does. Yeah. And it does a really good job. Daniel LaRusso does not have sex with a pig at no, any point. Not yet. I mean, there's still there's still time. There's still time. Give it time for pig fucking. We can and get I, there. And I think it'll end well because they won't, uh, the whole season, like, reveal that it was all, like, a dream and a big twist. And mm-hmm. you won't feel like you wasted your entire time with it. The true karate is the karate in your heart, not the karate oh you've God. been watching for all these episodes. Right. So what's your mm-hmm. score, Chris? Nine out of ten. Hell yeah! Wow, that high. Okay. Not, not perfect, and again, not revolutionary at all. But in in some okay. respects, I'm kind of tired of the race to be revolutionary. I would rather somebody take an existing formula and do it really, really well. Right. Yeah, I agree with that. I don't need to have my mind blown. And tropes exist for a reason. When they are done well, they can be comforting and fun to watch. They don't have to be just. Well, can you be- can you believe what happened? Can you believe Daniel LaRusso was dead the whole three Karate Kid movies in the beginning? <laughs> I didn't even know that, but this well, retconned it. Yeah, and, and now like those kinds of like cheap twists are almost expected now. Because it's like, how can we keep the audience engaged? And it's like, just tell a good story, dude. <laughs> yeah, sometimes I don't want to be kept on my toes. Sometimes I do, but sometimes I just want to sit back and enjoy a show. I don't need to overthink yeah, it. Totally. So for that purpose, it's been phenomenal. And it's definitely worth checking out. And again, free trial, so there's no real limit to it. You just have to give them a credit card information to make sure you cancel it before the month is over. So that is our reviews of things that we have missed. That's what we're catching up on. Lord knows there's been some other stuff, and we'll see what the next big review is. Last time, you know, we happened to do Avengers. I don't think we're all seeing Solo. I am. I probably will. So maybe I might too. I'm not in a Can huge we do rush, Deadpool though. or who's not seeing that? I'm Chris, probably not. You're not. Okay. I saw it. Michelle, we can bring it up with Dave because that was part of the that show that I had planned. We'll bring it up next okay. week. Yeah, okay. that's true. With all three of you having seen it and me not, I'll have to take my lumps on that. We won't do like a full review, but, no, but, but we can talk about it a little bit. Yeah. It won't be all that different from this week. I hadn't seen either of your two guys' things and it wasn't like, oh my God, I'm going to sit here until Michelle cut me off. Then I unleashed Holy Hell. I'm sorry. So that's the end of this episode. We'll be see you next time. In between episodes, you can check us out on the places at the bottom of your screen if you're on the video. 
That's ObjectionNetwork.com. Social media is at Team Objection. The YouTube channel, if you want to watch us do the podcast, is YouTube.com slash Objection Network. And you can send emails to the show to ObjectionNetwork at gmail.com. See you next time. Bye.